Grass. Welcome to Passion Time. I'm here with Dr. S.D. Shanti. She's got doctorates from all over the place, Harvard <laughs> and University of Vermont, and she's now teaching it uh, in Mesa, Arizona. She's an assi associate professor of public health at A.T. Still University. Uh, um, it's the University of Health Sciences. But she is uh, a grassroots activist to prevent violence, and generally, general violence, but also violence against women. Um, and I find her background fascinating because she's been kind of like me, studying all her life about different things, and she really believes that you need to have fact-based evidence to do any kind of program around the world. And that's extremely important because she doesn't waste any money or time on things that don't work. Uh, she's got the scientific background to back up what she's trying to do. So welcome to Passion Time. And of course, because our show is called Passion Time, I want to know how you found your passion and how you are living your passion to start. Wow. Well, thank you, Patricia, for this invitation and opportunity. Um, I feel very strongly about suffering in the world that doesn't have to be. Yeah. Um, there are two kinds of suffering. You know, we all experience loss of loved ones. That's a kind of suffering we can't avoid. But then there are so many forms of suffering that are preventable. And that's why I went into the fields of public health and prevention, disease prevention, health promotion, because we need to really use what is known in all these areas to improve people's health. Unfortunately, too many people suffer, and it's preventable. Now, you told me that when you were 19, you had a breakthrough moment, a transformative moment that kind of said to you, you've got to do something about this. And some people have this. James Hillman, a, a mm -hmm. union, calls it the acorn. Mm -hmm. Some people come to the earth and they already know what they're supposed to do with their life. You found out when you were 19. I found out when I was 27. Uh, tell me what happened. Back then? Yeah. Well, I, I was just in my dorm room. Uh, I was in dental school at okay. the time. And, uh, yeah, because she also studied dentistry. Right, that's <laughs> right. That's health, right. Also that's dentistry. right. And, okay. and actually, my other doctorate is from Northwestern oh in my dental God. school, so she's not from Harvard. Harvard, Northwestern. Right. Yeah, she's got but it, right, anyway, so I have a master's from Harvard School okay. of Public Health. Um, it was just this kind of intuitive moment where um, I realized that my life's work was going to be serving the poor. And it was um, hard to really know beyond that, but I just knew in a deep kind of way that this was going to be my life's work. And it was something that served as a guiding light for me and okay. gave me meaning in everything I did. Yeah, which is a purpose-driven life, which is really important, right? Yes. I, I, I didn't use that phrase back then, yeah, but I think yeah. that has been... Meaning, meaning yes. is more important than yes. you know. Yes. Well, let's talk about what you want to do. Let, let's talk about what you know. You want to prevent violence around the world, particularly in, in poor countries. And you, you mentioned many things about literacy, but I want you to sort of give me an idea of how do we do this? How do we go about this? And I know you have to get funding to do these programs, but how do you go about dealing with violence, which is such a common problem in today's world, not just in poor countries, but even in the U.S. today, where mass shootings are happening on a daily basis. Well, not on a daily basis, on a weekly Well, day. sadly, yeah. uh, quite frequently. Yeah. Um, I'd like to step away for a moment from the mass shootings to right. say that those are more like the tip of, a, of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of violence that's actually pervasive in society, in the world, all the time. All the time, every day. Interpersonal violence. That's separate from, you know, like wars, right. but or you, could, you could say wars in people's lives every day or at home. Um, and it's called interpersonal violence, this kind of violence, and it affects everybody, men, women, children. Uh, but what's dramatic and startling is that it affects one out of every three women in the world, which comes to about a billion people, a billion women, mm -hmm. and one out of every three to four children in the world, according to the World Health Organization. So. With respect to my um, passion, I think uh, about 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, I started to become aware of all these issues in terms of their level of being a problem globally and numerically, um, just, you know, one in three and so on. Um, and so that has, that is actually beyond a passion. I think it's my obsession. Mm -hmm. I sort of think about it all the time and work on it. Mm -hmm. um, 
And what is important for people to know, first of all, is that violence is a problem in the world on the scale of tuberculosis or, or HIV, HIV AIDS. But there are not as many resources directed towards these problems. Um, the other important thing for people to know is that violence is preventable. Uh, researchers, especially, for example, behavioral scientists, public health researchers, have found ways to reduce violence. We may not be able to make it go away entirely, but we can certainly uh, transform those big numbers that we mm -hmm. see. Um, so this is what's called evidence-based, you know, right. interventions research, yeah, or research-based approaches. So it, it is preventable. Um, and then the way to prevent violence, you know, it seems kind of, it is massive globally, but if we break it down into elements, there are three main channels we can, we can pursue mm -hmm. uh, to prevent violence. The first is similar to giving people a vaccine, um, all, you know, just as you might immunize somebody with um, the measles, mumps, rubella sure. vaccine, you can teach people skills through what's called psychological education and skills mm -hmm. training. People can learn behaviors that present them with alternatives to violence. And in this case, you know, women are affected by violence and illiteracy mm -hmm. more so than men. So we want to get there. It's like a 911 or SOS mm -hmm. um, kind of call. But equally important, in every community, there are natural women leaders who, who gravitate to things like you know, prevention, disease prevention, or violence prevention measures. And they are hungry and eager to take this because they see problems within their spheres of influence. There are school principals, right, nurses, right, right, teachers, right. community activists, all kinds of people. And it is by mass mobilization. So um, I have a three-part approach. So to summarize this, it's mm -hmm. a three-part approach that I coined, science, strategy, and soul. So science, we need to use what's known and efficacious. Right. Strategy is by looking, where do we invest? How do we cost effectively mm -hmm. get the science well, we right. where we'll get the biggest and ra most right. rapid outcomes? Right. So strategy, and how do we do so in a cost-effective way? And then soul, because it, it this changing the world or whatever, you know, addressing these global problems that you're talking about, will only come about when large numbers of people work together in a concerted way. So one of the things I have observed through my travels, my research, and you know, I've, because of this work, I've gone to several countries mm -hmm. and talked with people from lots of countries. Right. Um, everybody desires the same thing. You know, wh whatever religion, whatever yeah, nationality. These are the um, virtues and the values that we all Exactly, for, yeah. and everybody longs for a a positive future for their child. Sure. They long for fam the family unit to be happy and mm -hmm. thrive. Mm -hmm. And so when people can align and work together around a common platform, then we can make change happen. And again, you have lots of examples of that. All right, Dr. Shanti, how can they, uh, the audience connect with you and see if they can help out or be part of this? Wow. Well, Critical I would, mass so yes, that we exactly. can make the world a better place. Yes. What and would and, your website and be? thank you. And build a better future, a better future for, for our for children. Our that's yeah, right. That's right. What um, would it be? The, the your 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 email or yes, how can they certainly. Reach you? I would be happy if people contacted me if they want to work on this in some way, collaborate or support. Mm -hmm. um, the best way right now is my email address at my university, and that is S like Sam. Shanti, uh, which stands for peace. So it's S, S again, H A N T I at A T S U dot E D U. Um, my website's actually Don't not up fully. All right, Thank well. you. And but, but I. If they're yeah, interested in this absolutely. topic and how they can Please, help and I would be, be very happy to. Okay. Thank you so much, talk Dr. Shanti, further. and uh, congratulations on the work that you do. Thank you, Patricia, for this opportunity. All right, and we'll see you next week on Passion Time.
Yo sé que tú puedes, que tú eres capaz Cambia tu vida La vida es una Y tú vas a triunfar Cambia tu vida Con fe y esperanza Las puertas